Hey guys, I'm Dust with JP. I'm here with lead engineer, Matt. And today we're gonna get into a little process we call thermo fit. So we're gonna pull that curtain back and let you guys in on, on one of our, you know, in my opinion, one of our most crucial uh, building recipes here. So Matt, why don't we get into this? We got uh, an LTC-19, a PSC-19. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we're doing this is because the home builders are gonna wanna know how to do this with these receivers. Yeah, what we've done with these, with these brand new receivers is uh, taken our thermal for processing, kind of simplified it, and made it intrinsic to these designs. And so these now require thermal fit to even use them. If you try to take this receiver and put it on the barrel, you're gonna run into a problem. It just doesn't fit, but that's intentional. And what we've done is kind of uh, done, our, done the math behind this and figured out uh, exactly how the tolerances need to line up so that way these require just a minimal amount of torching to get them on the receiver and get, achieve a really good thermal fit and uh, without having to fuss with anything else. Right, so. So, so the thermal fit process is actually where we will heat up the receiver to get the aluminum to expand to fit around the uh, barrel extension, yeah. right? Exactly, yeah. And, and then we're gonna slide it on and it's more of a tension fit once it's in there. And, and I've tried pulling them apart it, with you know just the barrel in the receiver and I couldn't get it out. Yeah, yeah, I mean the, the amount of tension you can generate with this kind of uh, thermal fitting process is pretty incredible and it really is uh, a key to making the thing act like one solid piece. Right, and, and some of this thought process came behind the, um, you know, there was this, always this uh, idea that a bolt gun was more accurate than a gas gun and I know we here at JP, we've proven that is not the case. Yeah. We're, we're shoot, our, our gas guns will shoot just like a bolt gun. And a lot of people, you know, when you look at this tension fit here, we're kind of doing the exact same thing with the bolt gun, except the bolt gun's gonna screw into like a Remington 700 yeah, upper. Yeah, and, and you're usually using the, uh, you know, the shoulder of the barrel or a jam of the Savage system to create this that tension in the threads. Exactly, and what we've done, the thermal fit, we've been able to take the kind of the same ideas put that into a thermal fit, throw it into our receivers, and we're getting the same, you know, the, kind of the same principle there. Yeah, nice if not even better, because in this case, you're not having to rely on threads or anything like that. Okay. You know, nothing's gonna slip here. Right. Once you've installed this thing, you have to intentionally take it apart. It's not gonna, you know, there's nothing, uh, like threads always have that problem of uh, accidentally coming loose. That's, this is like a uh, permanent right. installation in a lot of ways. So can, can you give us a little bit more backstory, you know, like, how this came about, when it started, and, and kind of your idea when you were introduced to it and you know why you've decided to do that with our upper receivers, our new upper receivers here? Well, I think there's always been a desire to make this process more straightforward and, and simple and kind of get rid of some of the kinks in it. And this is part of, the, part of what that is. You know, we've made it so now you don't need any intermediate solutions. Uh, you know, and other people have tried things like using, uh, you know, Loctite products and things like that to uh, to kind of mimic this process mm -hmm. or a backdoor approach, and none of that's going to work as well as this. This is really good because all you've got now is extension piece and the upper receiver. There's nothing going in between. It's just right. It's it's going to simplify the entire process. So we we have you know uh, two metals. We have aluminum and then the the, the extension, and they're going to, in essence, expand together roughly and not have, you know, people have put Loctite, I've even heard of people trying to put anti seize in there to get that tighter mating surface. And now we're not worrying about that inner surface expanding at a different rate. So like- Well, yeah, I mean, some... you have to get these things really hot to get, to get them loose, as you'll see here. And you're just not gonna achieve that under normal shooting conditions right. for the most part. That's awesome. So I, I know when I started building rifles here at JP, that was like, hey, this is our secret sauce, or, or one of our secret sauce, right? I mean, there's a lot that goes into our engineering, of course, you know that. Um, but the thermal fit was something I've had a lot of people say, hey, I'm trying to get my barrel out of my rifle, how do I do that? And I'm like, well, yeah, uh, <laughs> why don't you send it to us, we'll take care of that. And, and then, you know, people are like, yeah, I, went to, I, I put a new barrel in there, I don't have the same fit that it did when it came from JP. And it's something we've never been able to share, but now the home builders, um, you know, they, they've got this idea now, they can go home, and build their own rifles, get the same type of accuracy, or close to the same type of accuracy that, that we get out of our rifles here at JP. Yeah, well, at least this one element. Right. So. That's awesome. Well, Matt's gonna get back to fixing the side charger for his competition shooters, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it here. Awesome. And we're gonna show you guys the actual process of uh, thermal fit um, coming up. All right, before we get started in the thermal fit process, 
I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more brief history behind this. So I sat down with John Paul. We, we talked for about an hour or so at JP's Blue Steel Ranch, and we talked about how this process came about. And I know John was looking for something out of a gas gun, even though he was getting sub MOA, he wanted to really bring that tighter, especially with the JP rifle. So him and our, and you know, we call him employee number one, uh, Dave Kamick, they sat down, they started experimenting with a bunch of different processes. And they came up with the thermal fit, which is really to get that tension fit between the barrel and the upper receiver to get the, you know, that ultimum uh, accuracy that you see out of the JP rifles. You know, for me, that was something really cool to hear that story and then know that, you know, for a while, for two years or so, I was building rifles and I was part of this long legacy of Thermofit. You know, with our new receivers coming out and with the way the market's going, we thought this was something great to share to all the people that want to build your rifle at home and using JP components. We want to make sure you get that ultimate accuracy out of your rifle as well. So with that being said, we're going to get into the Thermofit process. All right, before we start the process, I'm gonna kind of talk you through it. Um, we're gonna use a torch. We have a dead blow here. This is kind of your, your backup, just in case uh, you don't get the receiver hot enough as it's going on to the extension. Of course, we already got my barrel, you know, in, in the vise and ready to go. So we're gonna grab our torch. We're gonna to turn it on, grab our receiver. And I like to angle everything almost kind of at me but anyway so we're, we're going to be right here so i can get the receiver here and i can do some nice rotations now i'm going to do steady rotations we don't want to go too fast but we want to get some nice slow rotations seven rotations should be be the max that you need and and i'll just kind of show you a little dry process so we we'll do our rotations while the torch is going here and then from that point i like to position the receiver in my hand the way um, the barrel extension the pin on there is set up so when I come on, I can go straight on into the receiver here. Now, of course, it won't fit now, so we're gonna have to get it tight. But that process, it, or that time, it should slide all the way on, and we're good. It's gonna happen fast. We're gonna show you guys um, on two receivers here, so you get a better idea. So there's that process right there. I mean, it's, if you go slow going on to the barrel, she can get hung up. And as you can see, she's cooled down enough where, it, I mean, it's not coming off of this barrel. So on that one, I, I did around five and a half, six rotations. I wouldn't do any more than, than seven. If you have a Cerakote receiver, you may have to play around with this and do it a couple of times. You may want to start off with getting the receiver you know, warm and then put it, try to put it on. And if it gets stuck on there, I'm gonna show you how to actually get that off so we can restart the process. But Cerakote can get, get too hot where it actually starts to mess with the Cerakote, whether it's discoloration, anything like that. Um, so we'll get started again now. I like to get the pin of my extension here. I like to get it pointed up and a little bit at an angle because that's, I just know that's how I'm gonna put the receiver on. Tighten that down, grab our next receiver here. And like I said, we're just going back at it again. Now, as you saw on that one, I, I had to hit it at the end. Sometimes that's what the dead blows for. Um, this one was close enough where I just had to tap it on. As I was going on, I actually hit the pin and it kind of stopped it a little bit and I had to make a small rotation. And, and just from the experience, I knew that if I didn't hit that hard right away, it was gonna be stuck and we were gonna have to remove it. Um, but I'm actually gonna show you guys how to do that uh, process now. So um, let me get set up and we'll go there. Now, 
when I first started at JP, the first time I had to do a thermal fit, I messed up. If you're a little timid, which I was, and, and most people that first do a thermal fit, they are, you're gonna go a little slow. You're not gonna get the receiver all the way on the extension and they're gonna be stuck out and you have to remove it. It, it happens to the best of us. There's guys that have been building rifles here for years and occasionally they have one where they just moved a little too slow and it locked up and we just go remove it and we start the process over. Uh, very easy to do and I'm actually gonna show you guys how to do it at home. And uh, so all we're gonna do is, uh, you know, we're gonna grab our JP uh, vice blocks here. Take our receiver and we're gonna assume that this guy is messed up. Now just like, just like we did when we were putting the receiver onto the barrel, we're gonna actually get the receiver hot again and then we're gonna come in when, and we actually have a wooden dowel here. It's about a one inch uh, wooden dowel that we use um, occasionally. Fits in there just like that. We're gonna take our same uh, mallet here. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna get the receiver just warm enough, kinda like we did, but we're gonna reverse the process and we're gonna drive the barrel out. There we go. So now what we'd do is we'd put the barrel back in the vise, get everything set back up. Uh, we'll let the receiver cool down, of course. You will burn yourself, done that before. And uh, start the process over and hopefully get it on the second try. All right guys, so that is the thermal fit process we've been doing here at JP for years. Now like Matt was saying, on the 2019 series uppers, whether it's a LTC 19 or a PSC 19, that is a required process. Now, not only is it a required process, but it also is a process that's gonna help your rifle be that much more accurate. Now, we know a lot of you home builders at home are gonna do this. If you have any questions, please comment below. We'll do our very best to help you out. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Click on the bell for notifications and follow us on all of our social media platforms. And we will see you guys at the range.